There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There was a woman who came regularly to St. Francis de Sales and would come seeking spiritual advice, spiritual counsel for herself. Generally speaking, she was known to be a very pious woman. However, she had a bad habit that she really struggled with, which was to fall into the way of gossip. And so she came to the saint and asked him, how can I stop repeating these acts of gossip that I keep finding myself falling into? And St. Francis de Sales told the woman, he said, go home and grab a pillow from the, your bed at, how, at the house and bring it back to me. And so the woman did as she was told. She went home and she grabbed a pillow from the home and brought it back to the saint at the church. Then he said to her, come and follow me. And he led her up the stairs of the bell tower. And of course, at the, that time, the, the church was the tallest point. The top of the bell tower spire was the t tallest point in the entire town. And so he led her up to the top of the tower, and then they stood there looking out over the entire village. And St. Francis de Sales said, Now take that pillow and cut it open and take the feathers and shake all of them out over the edge of the window of the bell tower. And the woman, without questioning, did as the saint asked her to. She cut open the pillowcase, took all of the feathers that filled the pillow, and it began to dump them out the window, all the way to the very last one, so that it was completely empty. And seeing the wind come, and took all of the, the feathers, and it scattered them to the farthest corners of all of the city, spread it all over the town, and blew them amongst the streets. And... Then St. Francis de Sales looked at her and he said, Now, for your last task, go and retrieve every single last one of those feathers and bring them back and put them back into the pillowcase. The woman looked at the saint and said, That's impossible. There's no way I could ever go and retrieve all of those feathers. They've scattered all over the place. I don't, I don't even know how many there are, let alone how far and wide they've spread. And St. Francis de Sales looked at her and said to her, It's even more difficult to take back the words you've said against another. With that, the woman was left with the spiritual message to help her avoid falling into the sin of gossip. Gossip, or probably more specifically speaking, the sin of detraction. That's what we want to talk about today, a little catechetical type of sermon as we have here. What is detraction? Because it's sometimes something that comes so easily and is so little thought of as the words flow from our mouth. But, the, but detraction is the sin of slandering our neighbor in a broad sense. Now, as a point of distinction to be made from this detraction itself, there is calumny. Calumny is when the slander against the neighbor is using information that is false, lies. When, and then detraction, when we talk about it, usually refers to information that is true, but still something that is not the right of others to know and is something de deleterious to the, the good name of the person being spoken about. So what does it mean, now continuing on with that definition, what does it mean to slander our neighbor? How does that take place? How does one do that? Well, it's many ways that it can occur. It's to accuse a neighbor of a vice that they may not be guilty of, to reveal a secret crime of that person with the intention of hurting them, or when one's duty does not require it. It's an attributing of evil intentions to a person. It is when we look at the, their good qualities and commendable actions and we deny them or we lessen them or we refuse to point them out when they deservedly should be done. 
It's when we undercut merits of another person. It's when silence, when praise should be given, is, is what we serve up. It is anything along these, uh, this vein, this idea in which we harm uh, the, the name of another person near us. And it is indeed a sin. Why is detraction sinful? It is contrary by itself, itself is contrary to the virtue of charity. It is directly opposed to the, to the love of neighbor. And because when we define charity, we cannot separate the two, it is therefore opposed to the love of God. Because to love God above all things with our whole hearts, our whole minds, and our whole self, and to love our neighbor as ourselves for God's sake, it's not two commands, it's not two separate virtues, they are truly bound and inseparate from each other. So to violate against one is to, to violate is to violate against the other. Especially if we violate against, violate against the lesser, it is an offense against the greater. That is, offending our neighbor offends God as well. And in doing so, we commit an act of injustice along with it. We rob our neighbor, rob them of something that is greater than a possession of riches. We name and we maim and plunge them into a, a want and a misery. And potentially, we open the door for them to commit greater vices than what has drawn our detraction in the first place. If we look to the gospel, you can see that very clearly. First off, there is the accusation made against the unjust steward. It's not to say that he is unjust, and this is not even our Lord's primary point of the parable, but it is something to be learned from the parable, that, the, that there is another person who accuses the steward of, of not taking good care of the goods of the master. And what does that lead the steward to? He, he hearing that his name has been drugged before his master and that he is going to be accused of the crimes that he's guilty of, maybe not being as attentive or as diligent in, his, in managing his, his master's affairs, he realizes that his life is going to be ruined. He's going to be thrown out. He's going to be subject to poverty. And so he goes about and goes and creates, c commits even greater crimes. He begins to take the, the just debts that are owed to his master that he normally would have otherwise collected, and he reduces them so that when he is thrown out, he will find favor amongst the debtors of his master. One simple act of detraction has led to greater acts of sin committed by the offender. St. Ambrose says, in regards to detraction, that let us fly from the vice of detraction, for it is altogether a satanic abyss full of deceit. And also that detraction is a great sin because it is so hard to be recalled or undone. And this is an important part of that realization that in addition to being a violation of charity, it is a violation of justice. Because in violating it, it is necessary for the offender to make reparation for the crime committed. If one takes away somebody's good name, which they have a right to possess and the right to be held before other people, they must do their best as a matter of justice to repair that. If they have offended against one person, they must go to that one person again. If they've done so in a large capacity, in a public way, they must make reparation in that public way for doing so. And But what they find is, like the woman shaking out the feathers, it can never really truly be gathered back. Even if we only speak of it to one person, say, 
we don't have control over whom that other person now then goes and speaks to. We also have no way of undoing the thought of what they have already heard in their minds. We might apologize, we might say, I should have never said that to you, and, and, and uh, say that the, the, the person we spoke ill of has other really good qualities, but at the same time, in the mind of the person who has heard, they have already been impressioned with the ill that has been taking place against the person being slandered. So with that understanding comes a follow-up question though. Is it ever okay to reveal the wrongs of a neighbor? Yes, it is. But we have to realize that to do so takes place in certain circumstances of necessity. It can never be for trivial reasons. It can't be a point of entertainment. It can't be a point of news or curiosity or the like. But rather, when serious necessity binds us to speak, then it should be done with the focus being most importantly on the good to be affected and charity to be held. So for instance, if it is for the purpose of correction or just punishment for wrongs done, it should be done at the, the most intimate of levels first and foremost. If it's possible that, uh, that uh, it be brought to attention, one should do it directly to the person who is offending in in some way so for instance if the the unnamed speaker out who who, who reveals to the master the ill doings of the unjust steward he should if possible start by bringing his objections to the steward first Perhaps he can amend his ways on his own. Perhaps he can fix what he is doing without having to be looked down upon by other people or to have ill, uh, to have bad effects come to his life. Perhaps it's simply a life lesson to be learned by him. But if in doing so it's either impossible or, or extremely difficult to, do, to, to be able to do so, then it may be brought to the next level uh, which is to their immediate superior, that somebody could bring it to the master to say, hey, by the way, you know, you should know that this man is squandering your, your fortune and you should uh, look into that a little bit um, there. But not to the general population, not to, as a general rule to be spread around like wildfire. <clears throat> then, we also see that it is possible to reveal, or, or necessary at times, to reveal the uh, hidden faults or wrongs of, an, of a neighbor in the case of grave need for avoiding harm to come in the future, potential harm to come. If someone sees that, that if not warned about interaction with a certain person or a certain uh, number of people, whatever it may be, that something more serious could probably come about and that th that person may may wish to have, if, if they had known, had taken different actions, then in that case, at times, uh, it is necessitated to reveal as, in as small of a way as possible the secret faults of another. Thinking about it, if you knew somebody to be of a very bad character and they were to come and to want to have a job you know, working um, with your family in your in your own home, or somebody to be even uh, who is uh, you know a repeated offender against you know theft to be hired on in your uh, as your employee, and your friend knew about it and said nothing to you when you when you took the person on, and then you were to realize that harm come to yourself, then you would have rather that your friend had said something in order that you might you know rethink taking that person on into your own uh, house or your own employment. Now, again, it's not that they say everything about the person. It's not that they try to, to, to destroy the person's reputation, but merely to serve it as a warning against what may poten 
and what potential harm may lay down the road. And uh, both of these situations we should see as uh, be, as being cases of charity in the, the reverse, but also something that we should be extraordinarily cautious about before we engage in, to actually think and wait and, 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 and to, to reflect upon it. Is it my own desire to speak about it, or is it uh, something that I view as a true duty and a need for me to speak up on. A lot of times one can look at it and see where the natural desire is. If you want to say something, probably it's something better left alone. If you don't want to and you and you struggle over what, saying it, but but uh, you feel that the, the greater need needs it, then that is the time that often means you should perhaps think about speaking up. Charity as our Lord tells us, is the highest of virtues, and it brings to us the greatest of treasures, heaven itself. But with violations of charity, certain violations like those of detraction, we take that treasure and we scatter it. We scatter it like the feathers. We scatter it and squander it like the goods entrusted to the good steward. Uh, to the bad steward because we truly have no right to eternity and paradise and we have no right to the graces that come to us in this life from above but our good god he is generous to us and he longs for us to be with him in eternity he wants to give us all of the spiritual aids to get ourselves there and with that trust given to us and that treasure within our grasp we have to keep our mindset upon what is the greater good, the highest aim, the virtue of charity, the eternal reward for that. Because otherwise, we trade it all away and squander it like that unjust steward. And we get back in return just a few cheap words that fall easily from our lips. No. The effort at practicing virtue in all ways possible is always worth the effort. And especially in those aspects which come so easily and with so little thought, we as Catholics, we as those searching after the eternal reward, we have to remind ourselves and keep before ourselves the trappings that are so easily for us to fall into so that we may avoid those pitfalls and strive always after the higher rather than what is the easier thing to do. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.